car so look at him. Well, there she is. Let's go to the front. All me along. Come on. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for watching us. We got the Big Joe herd up here. Take a look at how I got them up here yesterday. Well, what I'm doing right now is I've got to get these yearlings back over to pasture two because I've got to get the big herd up um, from pasture three and four, the Big Joe herd, they're out here. I need them to come up so I can catch the two calves we could not catch the other day. I'll explain why we couldn't do that, but those calves here born at the Ponderosa need to start the weaning process. So I gotta get these guys out of here so I can get the Big Joe herd up there and uh, I'll see if they'll follow me through here. Come on! What do you want? I gotta go plant it. Come on. Here she comes. <laughs> There's a couple missing. Oh my. Look at that left behind at the feeder. <laughs> Here they come. Oh, this one's rowdy too. They all got left behind. We're excited. Come join the party. Back up. Let me just go shut this gate real quick. Guys, get away. Quit eating my pine tree. Get back. We're looking. Go. gave them some cubes just to treat them because they did what I asked them to do. They came through the gate. You guys probably wonder why, why, why do I have a pine tree down here? Well, we're on the way down to this pasture, pasture three and four, and I've been planting some pine trees around. I love pine trees, so I've been planting some. I went ahead and gave them some treats to reward them for coming through the gate like I asked them to. You know, anytime that they'll follow the ATV, that's a, that's a good thing, so go ahead and reward them for it. All right, now we uh, I got them, which is good. So I got all 22 yearlings and pasture two. So pasture one is open now. And the point of this is, is I've got to get Big Joe and them back up to the front. This is pasture one, you see the red barn. I've got to get them up there and I've got to try to get them to where I can sort them out and get the calves out. Because the way we had our handling system up for the working, here at the Ponderosa, we really weren't able to sort of what I call cut the calves, and that means sort them and separate them to start the winning process. So wasn't able to do that. I said, I'll just get them back up and I'll catch them and sort them and they can start the winning process. So I've got to get them all the way back up there. Cubes can do a lot of that. And then I'll be able to gate cut them, hopefully, and get those two, uh, their little bulls, get them started on the winning process. And I really want to do that because I'm going to rotate the Big Joe herd back to this nine acres where we uh, cleaned out this pond that I'm excited to get them on. I've planted some rye and some mixed seeds out there and it's came up great. So I want to get them back there on that and let them graze some of that. There's actually a lot of native grass in that paddock. So I'm going to let them out there. But before I get them further away from the, from the front, I got to catch those calves. 
They're locked away. Got those some cubes, got them busy, got them away from the gate. A little chance for me to come over here and shut it. What's wrong, Thor? Did she scare you? <laughs> All right, we got the big Joe herd back up to pasture one. Yearlings over in pasture two. So now the uh, big Joe herd can come up here and uh, when they come up here and I can get them with cubes more than likely, I can shut the gate. And then what happens is when they want to get out in a certain pen, that's where I have to try to gate cut them. And, and when that happens, it's kind of difficult, but you can do it uh, when you gate cut because they want to get out. When you open that gate, I have to try to cut the calves and keep them um, inside. So that's called gate cutting. We'll see if it works. Uh, we're gonna try it tomorrow. It's getting late and I gotta go pick up Brooks. So we're gonna let them chill out. They're eating cubes in the back right now that I just gave them. So uh, let them ease their way up here and they'll come up here and they'll want some cubes, of course. And uh, so then, and that's where I'll, uh, I'll try to catch them. So you guys stay tuned. I'll see you tomorrow. Betty, you better get out of here. It could get dangerous, Betty. It could get dangerous. I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah? See, he's telling you, buddy. Come on now. You guys, too. Silky, get out of the way. Silky, I know you'll get ran over. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is since they're up here close, they're already starting to make their way up here, I'm going to open some gates. And my goal today is, is I'm trying to catch two calves. We really weren't able to catch these two calves because I didn't have a sorting uh, area set when they came out of Doc Squeeze Chute here at the Ponderosa. So I need to get these two calves caught that were born here at the Ponderosa and I need to uh, start the weaning process with them. So I'm gonna open some gates and see if we can gate cut them. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, we got some learning to do today. Hope we can catch them. There's the two calves we need to catch right here. 54s baby and then 32s calf which is right here so that's 32 that's her little bull calf that's 54 that's her calf as you can see these two mamas came in here last time chandler and i tried to do this they want to go over here to the uh blue feeder is where they want to go right now but which is a good thing but we're going to open up this gate right here where i am and we're going to see if they'll come through and i start sorting them out and just try to ch catch their calves
So one of the first things that I did, I was going to try to get them in with, is uh, use a feed sack. Uh, just the sound of the feed sack can typically sometimes draw their attention. So I got the 32 cow in there. She's, eh, I don't like the look in her eye all the time. So I had to kind of be careful around her. She came in. I didn't really see the response of them. They're smart animals and they knew that uh, I was just trying to bait them in with a feed sack. So I had to try to get the feed sack back. Then I realized that this wasn't working very well, so I had to actually go get real feed to see if that would work. This time I actually got a sack of cubes and see these animals are still a little weary about coming in this pen because about two weeks ago this is how I actually drew them in to this pen and I knew that I had a good shot of catching them was because the first couple of animals that came into this particular lot were the cows and so Big Joe he really hesitated but uh, with some feed I was patient I spread it out and I was kind of holding and waiting there in the pen to see if they'd come in it was in there well they were really hesitant so I decided to go ahead and go around the corner of the barn and hide and sure enough as soon as I turned my back and started walking away and hid behind the south side of the barn they all came in when I had my opportunity I made a run for it I ran straight to the gate And I got him. Once I had him trapped, now is the time to start gate cutting. Luckily, a cow came out first. I was able to get Big Joe out. Then it was time to try to catch the calves. I was lucky to get the cows out, and then I shut the gate before the calves got out. Got him. This is a that was what was called a gate cut. So we got we got these two little bulls cut, which is which is good, and uh, they're not too wild right now. But what we'll do is uh thor needs to get out but we're gonna leave him in here let him be able to um be face to face and touch nose to nose and still smell mama for a couple weeks and be able to let big joe and them out and actually go full bore with the weaning process after a couple weeks Everybody's still wondering what's going on. It's a this whole thing is a communal thing. He's, these animals are so social. They you can hear the mamas and the other bison talking kind of each other. But uh, these little guys, they got some fresh water now. 
they can still touch noses with mama um, and uh, they've got some feed right here we'll get them started on that we always use so these guys will be good to go right here and this pin is solid you know we've got some old school cow panels right here that are welded on that were already here but this thing is solid which is always good to have when you start the weaning process is to have some solid pins you don't want to ever do barbed wire or anything like that because these calves are stressing out a little bit right now during this stage and you don't want them to try to dart through some barbed wire because they will uh, but this is a nice tough corral right here that we're looking at they'll be safe in here okay and now we've got those calves taken care of it's uh, quite a task when you're by yourself i can make it sort of look easy and the only reason i say that is because my animals are used to me first of all and then two i can get them to come up and i can get them to cooperate pretty well by using the cubes that we always do but i can't imagine being out on hundreds or thousands of acres trying to do that that's why when you got them you got them that means you need to cut them gate cut them sort them do whatever you need to do then and there we didn't have quite the setup for that whenever doc was here now that's something we're working on whenever we get a system someday we'll be able to do that and we'll have it a system where we can actually sort them out right then and there but because of that we had to let them back out in the pasture and then uh, i didn't want to single them up do one by itself so you always got to keep at least two together uh, when you do that because they'll overstress and um, luckily there's two calves over here that were already born here so that's when we're starting the process here and then what I'll probably do is bring mom and Kevin's over here I may take these over to mom and Kevin's so we can put all the uh, calves together for the winning process and, and do what we always do and start our program with those guys windows dirty there's something you guys have been asking me a lot about is how is Eleanor's baby Nora, I want to talk to you about her and give you an update on her. So we're going to run to the Dunbar place at Mom and Kevin's and uh, we're going to take a look at them and see how they're doing. And uh, we'll give you an update on Nora. Nora, I don't think Charlie's happy with you. Hey, Charlie. Or leave Charlie alone. He's just a little cat. Just a little cat. Thor, quit. <laughs> well, there she is. Hello, looky there. We are standing on all fours right now. Jackie, what are you doing? Looky there. Let's shut this before. Anything wild happens. Looky there. Doing so much better. Hello, Eleanor. Hey, Eleanor. Hey, Eleanor. There's your baby. Look at her. So much better. Look at that. There's the injured leg. Looking good. Man, hey. Oh, well that's not very nice. Jeez, yearling. I'd say a little Nora here is doing much better than she was. Mom and Kevin told me that she was doing a lot better but uh i actually don't see a whole lot of limping so whatever happened I'm glad it's not major but that's just part of it and it just it, animals get hurt no matter what but it must have whatever got her must have just got her pretty good so i'm glad she's doing much better 
hanging out here with our uh, princess. <laughs> But she's standing on all fours. She's not favoring to one side. Glad it is healed. Now we're doing much better. These uh, yearlings, so we've got five yearlings in here. And some of these are left over from the Texas group that we bought in uh, 2021. And here come Dunbar and, and all of them. There's Dunbar right there. He's all coming up here. But uh, these guys uh, bought some of these two right here are from uh, the Texas crew. Here's another one from Texas. And then I raised two of them right back there. Those are my two that I raised. So um, that's why we got Eleanor in here, mainly for baby to get better. And so far, success, just kind of a way out from away from Dunbar and them to reduce the uh, injury again. Now, once she gets a little bit bigger, we'll let her out again. But those calves right there and i said this last time i was over here those calves will um be weaned probably in january february somewhere in there uh because they're they're six or seven months will be up at that point looky here looky here what's up big fella what are you doing Oh yeah, hanging out with the Dunbar right here and his crew. Um, some some of you guys uh, were very curious about weights and uh, actually this is the biggest Dunbar has ever been. Some of you may not know, Dunbar will be five this spring. That's how old he is. And so Big Joe is seven years old. Now, when I first got Big Joe, he weighed 1885. Um, he was fed every day of his life and, and there's nothing wrong with that. He only had two cows that were running around with him which is Flo and kit and so when we got him and we worked him the first time big joe weighed 1885 uh with him breeding more and then you have the drought and and him working more basically uh, big joe this year i'm pretty sure he weighed 1685 something like that and then dunbar here weighed 1580 i believe and that's the biggest dunbar has ever been so bison they uh can grow till about they're five years old um their maturing age is up to five is basically where they can um stop growing now the weight can still gain uh, of course you can they can still gain weight but that was the biggest he um has ever weighed here and it was 1580 um and big joe this year i think he was 1675 had this go around and so with the drought and all that he's uh lost some weight so uh that's okay they can put some pounds on during the winter and whatnot and we we'll always give them some cubes and try to keep them well nourished and, and healthy as possible and and sometimes the worm load it is worse in some summers than it is in others and and winter's the same so uh the parasite and worm load can be uh, a little bit harder on them depending on what season it is or depending on what year it is so i was very happy to see the big fella here getting him at that biggest weight he's ever been now that's still he's that's not that big of a bull he has gotten bigger i have noticed it uh just by the naked eye and you can notice he's gotten bigger over time obviously but um he's still got a little room to grow uh there's no telling how big he can actually get and um you really can't get the full um view of their size um, when you're on TV, you just can't do it or on the computer or on your phone. You just can't get the full size of these animals until you come up close to them and get up personal with them. Um, like I do. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I've really enjoyed being, having Dunbar. I've got some, I've got, when we first got Dunbar, he was only a yearling. And so, uh, it's been fun to see him grow up and, you know, he's kind of, uh, he's, he's where it all started for me. Uh, as far as YouTube goes, as far as um, social media goes, it started with this guy right here and his shenanigans. So I appreciate Dunbar. He's been a good bull and um, we're just happy to see him grow and uh, weigh the most he's ever weighed. And um, he'll keep he'll keep growing, hopefully, and we'll get another weight in the spring. So good news is uh, 
Baby is doing much better and walking on all fours. No signs of, hardly any signs of limping. So, and uh, calves are winning over here. Something we're gonna talk about pretty soon is what we're gonna do with these animals. We may start taking some animals um, pretty soon over to the Ponderosa and mixing in with the Big Joe herd. Now, there has been talk and we hadn't decided yet. There's Dunbar. We haven't decided yet, but we've talked about taking Dunbar over to the Ponderosa as well. So that should be interesting. And we'll talk to uh, Kevin more about that. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for uh, being concerned about um, Eleanor's baby, Nora. Thank you guys so much for asking all your questions and your concerns. Thank you guys for following us. We'll see you soon. This Dunbar is silly. Look at him. <laughs> He's so silly. He's down there waiting on him. Yeah, watch. This is well-trained deer right here. Puppy! No! Come here. Come here, Jackie. Come here, Jackie. Can't be chasing the deer now. Jackie, I'm going to put you in the truck. Feed. The deer are waiting. Crazy. <laughs> Talk about trains, look at this. I don't know if you guys can tell, but that's how close I am to these deer. <laughs> Not too skittish. go. Let's watch how fast they come in. There's one right there behind me. Got them all. They're coming in. That's crazy. What are they eating? Yeah. We fed the deer. And they're already up there. I know, it's looking at you. This one buck. I don't see a buck. That's the buck. Where's the buck? Right there. That's the buck. Oh, I didn't see him. That's the buck. Is it? Good no, no. 